I'm Valerie, and today we're celebrating Miss Molly's retirement. Molly here was purchased at Hancock Fabrics circa 1999-ish. She's adjustable. The hips have not worked. The gears are stripped for years and years. The bust and the waist still work pretty well. Those are the only adjustments you can make. I am long. She is not. Some of the polystyrene is starting to get a little crushed. There was a point when I was working on Padme up in my living room and I had that 17 pound velvet robe on this thing and I draped it so carefully and it went and my husband just looked at that going, is that gonna stay? I have some pretty intense builds coming up that need to be fitted very carefully. And for that, we will now introduce this lady. This is my brand new, just finished building Bootstrap Fashions DIY dress form with optional arms. This project is a little involved. The best advice I can give you, take your time and stitch slowly, measure three times, cut once, all of those things so that it will be secure. Check and make sure as you go that it's continuing to be the right measurements. I did the measurements flexed so that sleeves will still fit when I move my arms. So the arms look a little funny, but overall she's pretty much, you know, what the shape that I need so that I can drape the projects that I have coming up. I made the cute little top you saw on Molly in my intro using another bootstrap pattern. So I already had my basic measurements saved on my account. The form has customization options to make it a more precise match for your body shape than you would get from just measurements. Click on the little info button to see the illustrations and find the one that best matches your shape. Then select the output format for your PDF. If you opt to have it include seam allowances, they will be 3 eighths of an inch. Once all those fields are completed, you can go back up and select the Fit Adjustments tab to refine it even more. When I print out a PDF pattern, I like to print a cover sheet on full sheet label paper to put on the front of the envelope. Separate the instruction pages from the pattern and use the scale square to make sure it printed out the correct size. With this many printed pages, I appreciated their layout system and the page with a key showing how to lay them out. Then it's time to line up, trim, and tape them together. I'm going to say take your time a lot in this video, but this might be the step where it's most important. Making sure all the lines and markings match up is critical. Then flip the whole thing over and tape all the seams in back too. Trust me, it's worth it. Once you have one big sheet, you can cut out the individual pieces. Make sure to cut right on the lines for the cardboard templates, including the holes in the base cardboard, since you'll be tracing around them. Even though I used an upholstery fabric, I still used the fusible woven interfacing to make sure each piece keeps its shape. If you're like me and you know it's going to bother you if the design of your fabric lines up wonky, it's puzzle time. Luckily, I only cut out one of the bottom pieces before I realized all the flowers were going to be upside down and I needed to completely rearrange my cutting layout. Once the puzzle was figured out again, I could cut everything out. I cut the inner support pieces from a sturdy, tightly woven cotton twill that won't get pulled out of shape. Fun fact, my cardboard pieces were cut from the box my fiber fill stuffing came in. I cut double layers of all the cardboard and glued them together for extra strength. Totally worth it. Elmer's Pro Bond Advanced is probably more than I needed, but I had it handy. Thank you. 
It's always important to transfer pattern markings onto your fabric pieces, but with this project, you'll really be lost without them. Make sure everything is marked before you start sewing. And when you do start sewing, again, take your time. This thing is full of fiddly curves and precision is key. If you're not in the habit of clipping and pressing seams, now is the time to start. So this is the center front seam of my dress form at the waistline. And as you can see, my zigzagging stitches marking the waistline are not lining up. I have unpicked this and sewn it back together three times, pinning it very, very carefully. And I am not going to do that again. So what I'm going to do after I clip and press the seam is I'm going to go over it with a slightly wider zigzag to make the two ends meet up to satisfy my this must be correctness and make it look acceptable to me because oh my god so as you can see not perfect because it still kind of gets wibbly wobbly in its width i actually started with the width of four in the center to try and make it meet although here it still wasn't quite centered on the thing so there it looks wider and then i kind of graduated it through three and a half and the three that i did on everything else toward the side seam so it's not perfect but it's better, and I no longer have two lines with the bottom of one meeting the top of the other, which would have annoyed me a lot. There's an error in the instructions on page 17. They neglect to tell you to sew the side seams before clipping and pressing them. It's easy to figure out from the photos, but it made me wonder if I missed a page or something, and nope. So, remember how I keep saying take your time? And this is where I sewed the right side to the wrong side of the next seam, like a dingbat. So I get to unpick this and clip it and stitch it again. Yay! So in the middle of this process, I have had a small brainstorm and I don't know if it's going to work, but I think I have to try it. See, the way that this pattern is made, it's the shoulders stop at the arm side. And Bootstrap actually has a separate pattern that you can buy for arms, which I am going to get because it would be heckin' useful. And if I'm using it without the arms, do I want the thing to stop right here? because I've gotten used to having a little bit more space on Molly. And I was looking at the professional dress forms that have the magnetic arms that come on and off. And they have a little sort of pin cushiony thing that you put on when the arms aren't there. Bing! I could do that. First of all, I'm going to recut the armhole covers in a unbleached muslin because A, that's what I'm gonna make the arms out of and B, it's thinner, and I think that the magnets will work a little bit better. So I have these little magnets. They're not rare earth magnets, but they're pretty strong magnets that I got at American Science and Surplus. Um, on a whim, one day I've had them around just in case I wanted to use magnets for something, and now I want to use them for something. What I'm going to do is cut little divots in the cardboard to make the magnets flush with the surface of the cardboard cover those and then cut more armhole cardboards for the little pin cushiony thingy that I'm going to be sticking on and then just make a poof, a poof from that out of the upholstery fabric that matches the rest of the dress form. I used this scrap foam sheet instead of another layer of cardboard thinking it might be better for the poofs, but it really didn't matter. Though if you do use foam, the Pro Bond glue is your friend. Making this up as I went along meant it took more steps than it needed to. Mark the holes for the magnets on the armhole cardboard template first and save the mental gymnastics I went through making them match up. I cut divots into one layer of cardboard so the magnets fit into them neatly, then glued the magnets in place with shoe goo. 
Probably anything in the E6000 family would be good. Make sure the poles of all your magnets are facing the same way. Then you can continue with sewing the cardboard into the armhole slot according to the instructions with the magnets facing out. This shot is a little out of order because it didn't occur to me until much later that it's easier to keep track of the poles on the magnets if you mark them. To make the poofs, I traced about an inch around the outside of the armhole cover pattern and stitched it by hand to an armhole cover piece with the cardboard inside. Leave enough space to stuff it with fiber fill before stitching it all the way closed. Proof of concept! Even if you choose inches as your unit of measurement on the website, any measurements actually printed on the pattern will be in centimeters, including the ones to match up the seam lines with the diameter of your inner pipe. I bought a four-foot piece of PVC pipe at the hardware store and used the pipe sleeve to mark where I needed to cut it off. I ended up pinning the seams on the internal stabilizers a couple of times before I got it right. The geometry is a little tricky. All together now, take your time. Once the stabilizer pieces are all stitched together, press them good and flat and make sure the edges line up correctly before sewing the reinforcing lines. This thing needs to stay the right shape if your dress form is going to. Once again, tricky geometry in sewing the stabilizer to the seam allowances inside the form. I actually ended up pinning it one way because it was easier to line up, but then moving all the pins to the other side because it would be easier to sew with that side up. Sew as close as you can to the seam while staying outside it. The instructions say to use a 3 inch sponge in the neck, one of the little clues that English isn't their first language. What you want is 3 inch thick upholstery foam, which isn't exactly difficult to cut, but it takes a little maneuvering and trimming to get to the shape you want. Cut as cleanly as you can, but don't drive yourself crazy. It'll squish. I did get a little obsessive about positioning the foam correctly in the neck so it looked nice and round and clean, because I knew there would be no chance to adjust it once the stuffing went in. Then it's time to turn it right side out and start stuffing. The whole stuffing process took me over three hours, putting in small handfuls to keep it smooth, with pauses to make sure I was keeping the two halves balanced and that my measurements were staying correct. I don't know if it's because I'm tall or because I stuffed the whole thing very firmly or both, but I ended up using a whole six pound box of fiber fill, as well as a bit more that I had on hand. So be prepared to need more than the five pounds the instructions call for. And now we see why those holes are there in the bottom cardboard to put even more stuffing in. I've seen a couple people say they've had trouble getting the strips at the bottom of the pipe sleeve to stay attached to the cardboard with glue. I went straight for thumbtacks, and it worked perfectly. And a little more stuffing. I decided on an inexpensive IV pole for the stand, but I didn't like the casters it came with, 
so I bought a set of sturdy nylon rubber wheels with brakes instead. The threaded stem on them was longer than the ones on the little casters, and I had visions of catching fabric on them and tearing it, so I put the caps from the little casters on top. I bought the pipe to be big enough to fit over the adjusting knob on the pole, which means that the top of the pole rattles around inside it a lot. To mitigate that, I cut some packing foam to fit and attached it snugly with duct tape. And there she is! Now to give her arms. The arm pattern is sold separately. Much simpler to cut, and pin, and sew, and press. I decided to make them from Osnaberg, still with the interfacing. By now I had my system down for putting the magnets in the cardboard pieces. I used double-sided tape to help keep the wrist cardboard in place when it came time to stuff the arms. Instead of turning the arm all the way right side out, you turn it as you stuff. It's a whole lot easier that way and helps keep the stuffing even. If you don't like hand sewing, you might be tempted to try to sew the armhole cardboard in place by machine. Trust me, you want the control of doing it by hand so it stays exactly where it belongs. After you've stuffed the last little bit at the shoulder, whip stitching it closed by hand is definitely the only way to go. And there's the arm! All of the dress forms and mannequins around here have names. I have decided that this lady is Danielle, in honor of Danielle and Ever After, partly because the colors kind of remind me of her famous Just Breathe gown from the mask, and partly because the fleur-de-lis in the pattern remind me of her crown in the throne room scene near the end of the movie. So this is Danielle. She's got some work cut out for her coming up. I'll have those projects. Hopefully some of them will be shared on here. All of it will definitely be shared on my Instagram. Some of you people film like almost all of your builds and I don't know how you do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna be doing that anytime soon. But maybe some highlights. If you're curious about what's coming up, one will be Hera from Star Wars Rebels. One will be my own design for an alternate universe version of Elphaba from Wicked. And you'll be hearing more about that in the months to come. So both of those have got some serious draping and figuring out of things to do that I hope you'll join me for here and or on the socials in the months to come. Until next time, bye bye Miss Millie's retirement. Molly. This is Molly.